Okay. So, I've got my 28-year-old uh, diaper here. It's great for this kind of thing. I mean, it's clean, besides uh, paint. Lovely paint. Um, and my same colors of cheap craft paint. You can add other colors, anything that would go with it, um, be sort of coordinating. Um, it is a little trickier to paint on the darker background. Um, it's harder for the light colors to come through. And I don't know why I didn't think of that. I usually try to do a lighter um, background just because it's, it is easier. Um, okay, so I use warm water in my cup because it helps, it just breaks down paint faster. Um, okay, we used this in there. Um, actually, I like to start with my side pieces. Hmm. So there's a little, um, bluey, I think that's just from these colors kind of blending, because I didn't use this blue, but I'm going to now. Uh, it's um, Victorian blue. I use it a lot. So I take a little water, and I just um, fill in some of these. So you can see it's a uh, very loose kind of thing, and you put the teeniest, teeniest amount of paint on there. A little goes a long way. You don't want them to be solid so that you lose your lines under there. If it gets too dark, I just thin it out. Add more water. Too dark. So, that's all I do. I do, sometimes I'll add a little bit darker, actually, in these little spots. Um, and I do a little shading at the top, and I'll bring it down, but it's kind of hard to see on this one. Okay, and then I flip it, and I don't do the same color. I don't do it the same way, but I fill in the little spots on the opposite end of the same color that I used in the other part. Okay, then I think I want something brighter. So then I will, whatever color I put here, 
I will put in those dots. I'm afraid it might be hard to get something to show up. Um, I'm going to use this. Um, is it, mm, what is this? Marmalade. So I'm using that. Again, it's Martha Stewart, so it's this teeny little opening. All you need is the paint that's in the lid, generally. So you get them a little wet. If they're too wet, just dab them with your, your diaper or your rag, whatever. Oh, that would be pretty. Remember, you don't want to lose your lines from your rubber stamp. You want them to be able to be visible through there. Okay. They can look so different depending on the colors that you choose. Okay, Maybe I like this one better. Um, so I'll do this. Usually I don't make them match. I just like the interest of each side being different. Sometimes they're very different from each other. I kind of lost the lines in this one. So you can add a little water. This one too. Okay. And so, little circles on this one. I 
love these colors underneath. And look how differently they look, this orange on that and on here, how much brighter it is and vibrant um, because that dark underneath there just gives it a whole different tone. Um, and I think I'm going to use this one. This is um, a waterfront, it's called really beautiful. I seem to like anything that has to do with aqua or water or the ocean or... And I forgot to wet this down first, so see so you get a real solid color. You don't really want that. So I'm just gonna start over. Thing over again. So I kind of like um, the top to be a little bit darker and then to pull it down. But you know, really, it's an envelope. It's good art practice, um, but it doesn't have to be perfect. This kind of art doesn't have to be perfect. It's been a really um, good lesson for me because I kind of like things to be perfect. Um, I don't say that proudly. It's not a good thing because it really holds you back, especially in art or decorating your house or whatever because it makes you afraid. If it's not perfect, then it makes you afraid to even try it. That this kind of art has been good for me in that regard because it's not a perfect kind of thing. It's just, um, it's a lot of trial and error. learned that when I'm actually doing the mixed media piece, I can have um, things sitting there that I think I'm going to use in it, and then, you know, it um, just takes on a life of its own, and if it wants to be something else, then it's going to be. Okay, and now I fill in these little circles. Don't think of your artwork um, as a masterpiece. You might hear me say this over and over, but um, 
that too will keep you from experimenting and trying trying things. Um, if you have a piece that is just beautiful or you you know have a certain idea about it or sometimes you haven't even started but you expect um, or you hope that it's just going to be you know profound and so that just it's just limiting um, it makes it so that you don't want to try or you're afraid to touch it because what if you mess it up so um, just try not to think of it like that that's a funky little spot not that it matters I mean seriously Terry um, okay so then you do the same thing with um, your leaves on your stems Just damp. You can always add more water into it. You can always take up paint. You can just sop the whole thing up if you want. So don't worry about it. There is usually a way to fix it. Once you're paintbrush starts dragging and you can feel the drag and a lot of you can hear it then add a little more water because it's too dry and I curse the person who told me to um, stay inside the lines coloring I'll never say that to another child Um, because most of us are so left-brained that we have a hard time not doing that anyway. And that too is limiting. So we don't need it reinforced. Because there is beautiful artwork that is outside the lines. So um, you can do a couple in the same color. I forgot to get that wet first. Um, but I like my stems to all be one color because it's just, I mean, each leaf on one stem um, because it's just more What's the word? Not coordinated. Um, Okay. It's really, I can't think of that word. Um, it's, it's like art puts you in, in, it gets you into your right brain. And so for me, it's like, I can, um, 
I can hardly talk at the same time. And I'm a good multitasker, but I think it just, it puts me in such another space. And that is why art is so important for people. And when people um, have emotional issues and things that they're trying to deal with, I think that's why, you know, people talk about art being so healing. Um, and so to me, that, that's the most important part about art. Um, that isn't why I do it, but, but it is therapeutic. Um, we all need to sort of get out of our own heads um, from time to time. And that is what it does for us. I've seen where it has helped people with pretty bad depression. Um, not that you maybe um, shouldn't seek other help, you know, from licensed professionals, but art can go a long way. It is good for the heart and the soul, um, let alone the mind. So I'm going to go back to this waterfront color. much paint there, way too dark. So I just take some of it and use it in another spot. And if I can't lift it well enough, my rag, my trusty old diaper. Another good reason to use cloth diapers. I had twins and I used cloth diapers. Um, but another good reason is they will be around for many years. You can use them as rags. I just do a teeny color on the stem, the actual stem. Mm -hmm. 